And a guy who knows all about it uh, won three times on the PGA Tour. He is now a Golf Channel analyst, uh, our pal Johnson Wagner. So, Johnson, where are you on uh, this uh, USGA RNA decision to roll it back? Well, first and foremost, I'm very happy they, that they decided against bifurcation. I think that that was going to be a terrible thing for the game of golf as a whole. And I want to take us back to 2010 when we went from square grooves to V grooves and how big of a deal that was for a couple of years. But you know what? It turned out to be a not so big a deal after all. Club companies innovated in the way they designed the clubs. That's going to happen the same here. I like everybody to just take a breath. What Mike Wan said back in the spring about this whole thing this is not about us this is not about our generation it's not even about our kids generation it's about 50 years from now and protecting the game that we all love so much johnson how would you describe the pga tour relationship as a player with the usga we've heard measured comments from from ricky fowler saying he's kind of grown to even change his mind a little bit but then you also have the the keegan bradley's of the world for example who called it in a golf digest interview monstrous the rollback. Well, and, and Keegan was specifically impacted with the anchor ban back in 2016, played beautifully with that belly putter for so long in his career, but he's developed a new strategy and he's putting well. As PGA Tour players as a whole, uh, the relationship with the USGA isn't that great. It has gotten considerably better under the leadership of Mike Wan. And for me personally, my grandfather was on this. He was he was on the executive committee. He served as secretary for years. So I have a love affair with the USGA, and I know that they are doing what they believe is the best thing for the future of the game of golf. And I happen to agree with them. Johnson, how do you think this will impact some of the shorter hitters on the PGA Tour guys uh, like Brian Harmon? And I, I mentioned Peter Malnati earlier. Uh, I mean, Peter Malnati and Brian Harmon both have gone on these last five years of, of getting stronger. Peter Malnati's picked up, I think, eight miles an hour of club head speed in the last five years. So these guys are continuing to try to gain speed, and they are doing it. I think it's going to affect the top end more as far as, dist as, as distance lost. But what it's going to bring back is creativity. And what Billy Horschel said was it's going to bring back center of the face contact. And when we look at these numbers, the best case scenario of lost distance, that's coming off of a center strike hit. So for all the amateurs out there that think they're going to lose so much distance off their golf ball, you're already losing it with center strike hit. So as Billy said, try to hit the ball a little bit harder or try to hit it a little more towards the center of the face. You're not going to lose any distance at all. Johnson, take us inside the tent a little bit. You're a three-time winner on the PGA Tour. What are those conversations like between players player and club manufacturer, ball manufacturer. How much time is a player spending working on that aspect of the game distance in particular? Well, I think we're always trying to optimize. And since the advent of, of TrackMan and all these launch monitors, it's become increasingly easier to get fit for a driver head and a shaft, which I believe is the most important, to maximize and create the optimal launch conditions, okay? So, but when you think about the amateur game and those same things, there are not that many people getting fit for drivers. And so uh, the, the fact is they're leaving probably 10 to 15 yards on the table as is. So the, the whole argument about losing all this distance, well, spend a little bit of time, get fit for the right shaft and the right club head for you. And I we go forward towards 2028 we're going to see some developments on the driver head that's going to take us back a few years it's this ball is going to spin more it's going to curve more and that's going to create club companies developing drivers that can knock some spin off of it as opposed to adding as much spin as possible does your tour want to sell uh, uh just enormous drives DeShambo driving the lake at number six at, at bay hill they they believe there's just value in uh in selling that I, I do believe that. I believe birdies sell. I believe long drives sell. I think we've seen it in my career starting in 07 on the PGA Tour. We used to have a lot of rough. Now there are not many tournaments that believe in a lot of rough. But back to your comment on DeChambeau on six at Bay Hill. Remember back in the 90s, John Daly taking that lake on. So there's nothing. We're not saying you can't. Nobody's The USJ is not saying you can't work out. You can't get stronger, more flexible. You can swing the club as fast as you possibly want. So that's where players have been in innovating that's been the biggest thing and i think we'll continue to see a trend that direction johnson is it fair to characterize the golf played on the pga tour as bomb and gouge and and if so do you think that is just a less interesting brand of golf 
Well, Rich, I consider myself an avid golf fan. And what I like to watch are players getting creative, hitting out of, uh, I think what made Tiger Woods so great was his ability to hit out of thick rough because he was so much stronger and faster than everybody and can put that speed on it to stop it out of thick rough. Yes, I think distance has become the ultimate thing in the game of golf. And I'm looking forward to us getting more shot making capability. Johnson, a major champ, texted me and said that, uh, you know, grow the rough, narrow the fairways, tuck the pins. You know, you got water. You've got great par threes throughout the game of golf. You think Augusta National 12. You think 17 at TPC Sawgrass that are just nine irons or eight irons or, or wedges. Are there other ways to combat distance, uh, you know, other than touching the golf ball? <laughs> Obviously, Damon, there are so many different ways to do it, but this is not like a short-term fix of just, oh, we're going to grow up the rough. We're going to create new design qualities. I like where the design of golf is going. It's going back towards golden age ideals where you put bunkers in strategic locations and you have to play around it to give yourself the best angles. And so I think Rory McIlroy has said this thing best the whole time. He looks at it from a perspective of, this is only going to make the better players better. And so I play a lot of golf back home with varying skill levels. I play with one of my best friends who's an 18 handicap and everybody needs to adopt that philosophy that this is a challenge that's been created. Golf, as we know, is, is a hard game, no matter if the ball goes arrow straight in 300 yards or if it curves. So I think everybody needs to take Rory's philosophy, which is this is going to make me better because I believe I'm better than everybody else. Johnson, what will you tell your 18 handicap pal back in uh, Charlotte about, <laughs> about, about this change? And you know, the, invariably, uh, they'll have questions about uh, what this means for them. Well, my, my buddy plays a Pro V1, which is the worst ball he could play. I would say get fit for the right ball. And if you look at a scatter chart across the face of his driver or his irons, it is all over the map. So as anybody wants to get better, the best way to do that is hit the ball in the center of the face and be consistent with that strike. And he probably, a lot of players, if, if they take that philosophy, can actually gain yardage with this uh, lower golf ball and have more fun playing creative shots. Rich, I, I, I used to draw the ball. I still do all the time. And there's times now where I hit an eight iron over the last five years trying to hit a big hook and the ball just doesn't curve anymore. So I think the argument that golf is not going to be as fun is ridiculous. I think the ball is going to curve more and people are going to have more fun hitting shots that are different. That 18, are you, are you giving him, was it 10 aside? <laughs> and and who, wins, who wins those battles? Well, he's getting 21, and if we play match play, he kicks my tail. But if we play stroke play, there's no way 21's enough. <laughs> a dangerous 18. Uh, no question. <laughs> I, I want to sign that 18 up on my <laughs> side too. for the next Calcutta. Hey, Johnson, have a great holiday. We appreciate you joining us. We'll see you real soon.